Hello and welcome everyone to our series of Mothers in, in Business interviews. And today we are so honoured and pleased to have a beautiful lady with us all the way from the USA. Her name is Yelena and her, her surname I will leave for her to pronounce because I don't want to I don't want to mess it up for her, but she has an absolutely amazing bio. And so before we formally introduce her, let me just go through her bio. So Yelena is a wife and a mother of four beautiful children. And I'm sure we'll hear lots about them later on. She's a licensed NYS cosmetologist and founder of Anneli Cosmetics. Anneli Cosmetics is a line of healthy makeup. It's made, of, it's made with organic, natural, vegan, gluten-free ingredients that are ethically stored and made in the USA. Yelena is an educator and believes every woman should understand the basics of makeup and skincare. With her expertise, she taught thousands of women how to apply makeup and take care of their skin. The love and passion she feels for making everyday lives of Busy Women Simple has become a true mission to her life. Join Yelena on her journey to simplify beauty. Well, I'm so super excited because as you can see, I don't really wear makeup. You know, a bit of face powder and lip gloss is, is about as far as I, I get. So welcome, Yelena. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're more than welcome. So if you'd just like to, to start off telling us a bit about your about your journey, your journey to success. So, you know, talk about your highs and your lows, but how did you actually get started in, in business? So it's actually a really interesting story because I always wanted to become a psychologist. I love psychology and I went to school to become a psychologist. So when I graduated, we were doing uh, an internship and I realized that it wasn't creative enough for me. For some weird reason, I thought it was going to be a very creative job, and I just, I couldn't do it. And even though it was really rewarding, I realized, oh my God, this is just not for me. So I went into business. I went into a different college for business and I was working in business. And then as I was going through the boring accounting classes, I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is what's going to kill me. Seriously, I couldn't take it. So my friend, my best friend, she called me up one day and she said, Yelena, you have to become a hairdresser. I said, what? I'm not touching anybody's hair. She said, Yelena, you don't understand. You're thinking small. This is for you. It's really, really exciting. One month of every single day, calling me, calling me, calling me. I said, fine. I went to beauty school in Manhattan and I spoke with the people there and she said, okay, let me just show you around. I said, okay, it was 9 p.m. I was really tired. Fine, let's go. We went from class to class to class. I was like bored out of my mind. And the final floor where all of the like almost graduates were doing the hair, the makeup, the glam, the glitter, the lights. I was like, oh, I'm signing up. This is it. <laughs> and I'm the kind of person I've always been like, if I made a decision, this is it. I don't care who has to do anything. I'm done. The next morning. So I placed a hundred dollar deposit. The school was $13,500. This was like 15 years ago. It was a lot of money. Oh, yeah. The next day I came to my, um, I was working for a nonprofit organization and I was doing all the red carpet events. And I told him, I quit. He was shocked. He <laughs> said, no, we're in the middle of like 14,000 things. I said, it doesn't matter. I mean, it was fine because I didn't really like him anyway because he was not a really good boss, but that's not the point. I said, I'm done. I, uh, I went to my parents and I said, I'm going to become a cosmetologist. My dad, a Russian father, you imagine. He's like, oh, you're going to be a barber after a psychologist? I said, dad, it's not a barber. It's like a PhD in beauty. It's a cosmetologist. Like, no, my daughter is not going to be a barber. That's it. I said, well, you know what? It is what it is. So I still went. I had about maybe like, I don't know, 7,000 in savings. And I bought jewelry. <laughs> 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 something I was like in the middle of I don't know it was like a life thing whatever so I bought the jewelry so I had zero money left I took a loan for thirteen and a half thousand dollars under my mom's name but I was paying for it mm -hmm. and I started school when I started winning hair competitions my parents were like okay all right okay 
but they were like, I don't know, I, like, are you sure you want to do this? Psychology is so prestigious. Because in a Russian family, pre- like, education is everything, as I'm sure in many normal families. And so for me to become a cosmetologist was totally like, no. So right before I graduated, I was offered a job in a very upscale, very tiny salon. I started as an assistant and about one year into it, my, one of the nutritionists that I know, she said, Yelena, there's a a salon for sale. And I was like, no, 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 I'm just an assistant. I don't know how to do anybody's hair. I've been assisting her for a year. So I told my parents and my parents were, okay, so get it. Who cares? If it doesn't go, it doesn't go. You're going to quit, go back to being an assistant. And I was like, no, no, no. And I'm not going to do it. I don't know how to cut anybody's hair. I'm going to butcher everyone. My dad goes, listen, you dove into this head first. What's the problem? Anyway, he ended up buying the salon for me for $20,000. I was like, oh my God, this was a lot of pressure for me. I was 24 and I went for it. Lord have mercy on all the customers that I butchered hair, but I was like, I'm going to learn. So as I was doing the business, I did a lot of facials for women. And I noticed that everybody was asking, well, how do you, can I put makeup on? Can I put makeup on? And if you had facial done ever or waxing, you're not allowed to do that. So all the redness after the, you know, the skin has to come down, they would come out and they would go to their work with glasses on, with little scarves on. And I said, no, no, that's not going to work. So of course I went to Google and I said, okay, which brand can I bring in? I couldn't find anything that was safe enough. So I came home and I was like, okay, I got to go to all the trade shows and find a chemist and start like thinking of maybe creating a foundation. So I I couldn't do it at the time because on July 29th of 2009, I got a phone call at 4 a.m. from my landlord at the time. And I pick up the phone and he says, the first thing he says, Elena, he had like this Greek broken English. Elena, everything burned down. Everything is on the floor. Everything is done. Your ceiling is on the floor. Your manic, everything is just burned. It's burned. Oh my God, my, my heart stopped. I couldn't talk. I was like, what are you talking? I thought it was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I hang up the phone. I go to my parents' room and all I can say is Elmas. That was the name of my salon. And my mom started crying. She said, what happened? She's very like sensitive. And my dad, what happened? Tell me what's going on. I said, Elmas burned down. My dad goes, Mazato, you know, like, great. Good for you. It's like a, it's like a, huge, it's a, it's a Jewish thing. He goes, good for you. You're going to go and do something else now. And I was like, oh my God, my salon. I was shaking. I was crying. I was like, oh my God, this is it. My life is over. At the same time, I broke off a huge engagement. Um, I was engaged. I was 25. And we broke it off like literally a week before that. So of course, my community went crazy. They had to talk about it. That's because that's what she gets. This is what she gets because she dumped him. This is karma. I was like, oh my God. So 25 years old, salon burned down. The engagement went down. I was at like the lowest low. So my dad we went to the place and there was cameras and, and TV stations and everybody's asking questions. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So my dad took me home and he's like, listen, get over it move on. This is life. Pick it up. Let's go. What are you going to do next? I was in such a crazy mode that I was suicidal. I was literally suicidal. I said, I cannot do anything else. My life is over. But a week later, I picked myself up and I said, okay, pull yourself together. I think thanks to psychology background, I was able to kind of talk to myself. I went to Manhattan. I printed out my, my, um, um, what do you call those things? you know, CD. when you go for interviews, CD. resume, CD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> resume, mm-hmm. I printed out and I went to any salon that I thought would be fitting. So every single salon that I went to offered me a job. And I was like, I just, it's not, not really what I want. So the person that was a supplier into the Elmis salon that I used to own, he calls me up and he said, Elena, I know what you did with your salon. I want you in my salon. You're going to be a head stylist. You're going to do whatever you want. I really need you to pick up the business. I said, okay, if I'm in charge, I got it. I went there. And I decided that now I'm going to do backstage shows. So my dream of creating foundations was really put on hold, like really, really far. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to do backstage shows. I'm going to do hair for models and for, for different fashion shows. So as I was getting finally somewhere in the industry, people were getting to know me. I meet my husband. 
My husband is very religious, um, modern Orthodox Jewish person. I'm also Jewish, but I'm, I'm not religious. I was not religious at all at the time. And he was. And it's so funny how things worked out because he was just, she, he kind of threw a hint like, you know, I would really, really love it if you didn't work on Shabbat. Shabbat is our holy day. It's Saturday where we don't touch electronics, where we don't drive. It's really a day of prayer. And I was like, but like every single event is on Saturday. Like every single fashion show is on Saturday and the stylist and makeup artists come like at three, four. But he was an amazing person. And I said, okay, that was my second huge turn in my life. Cause I was like, okay, I just got myself together. I am somebody now in the industry and I have to turn it around. I went back to the salon and I was working at the salon in the salon. The busiest day was also Saturday. So I had to make a lot of sacrifices because this person was really worth it. But inside of me, so much fire and so much creativity it wasn't enough. When we got married, of course, it was a religious household, right? I kept Shabbat, I kept everything. But my dream in the back of my head was I really want to create those foundations for women. My dad at the time bought a salon. He became a barber. And he asked me, hey, do you want to come to me? Because I don't have a women's section with the religious Jews. You have to separate women and men, right? And I said, I don't know, I guess. Okay, fine. So I went there, I re restructured the whole thing. I made it very pretty, but it was so simple. It, women just came in for simple haircuts, no creative color. I was like choking. So I got pregnant right away with my son when we got married. And when I was about like six months pregnant, seven months pregnant, I got into, we got into a car accident. And the doctor said, you have to be on bed rest until the, like at least two weeks. And then after that, we'll see. I came home you know, my mental state at this point of sacrificing, sacrificing, like my life was just throwing me around mm. and I was just like accepting it and trying to understand, okay, why, where am I going with this? It's, just, it's like, as soon as I'm getting somewhere, like universe is like dragging me out of it. That's not where you, where, that's not where you belong. And I sat down and my husband and I were not in a good financial situation because now I'm not working. He was doing real estate, but it wasn't like the best. And then I went online and I was like, I'm going to just look for a job where I'm sitting. I can't like work anywhere. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was, I started crying my eyes out. Like I remember that day so vividly and I was begging God. I was like, just give me a sign. Do I leave the beauty industry or do I stay? Five minutes later, I get a phone call and it's one of the clients in the, uh, my dad's salon. And she said, Hey, Elena, are you available to, I need to book six, um, events for one of my sisters she's coming from a different country and i need to do hair and makeup and whatever i was like oh my god this is a sign that's it i'm done i'm going into this i'm doing it so i told my husband i said listen i don't care how bad it is right now we're not starving we're still fine everything's okay i'm gonna go into my beauty industry i'm gonna continue i continued working in the beauty industry now, I had my son, I had my other son, I had them back to back. And when my older one, a year and a half and a six month old, I told my husband, listen, I've been going to these, um, you know, expos, beauty expos for so long. I need to continue doing it because I have to find the right chemist so that understands that I need to create these foundations. Now it's been already a couple of years. And then the night before one of the last days of one of very big events, my husband goes and plays basketball and breaks his foot. <laughs> I was I at that point I just broke I was just broken I said I don't care I like you figure it out call your mom call your I don't care who you call I'm going next day I went and guess what I found a chemist who explained to me oh I know what you need you need pharmaceutical grade minerals I was like oh my god finally <laughs> so we ended up creating a line of foundations powder foundations I brought it to um, I brought it to my clients at the salon, at my dad's salon already. And I said, hey, could you just test it out? Let me know how you feel. People loved it. I bring it back to the chemist and I was like, okay, people are loving it, but they're asking for more. So we started growing it. I didn't think of it to be a brand at all. I just wanted to solve a problem. But when clients are, were asking, well, what about lipstick? And what about this? And what about that? I was like, all right, I call my aunt and I was like, I need to find a name. So I was thinking like French name, something cute. And she said, can you just stop thinking about anything other than yourself? Just what, what does Elena want? Make it about you. 
So for two weeks, I was thinking, and I said, let me reverse Yelena, and I made it Analea. Oh. So the brand is Analea Cosmetics, which is my name backwards. Yeah, and she said, that's gorgeous. Just go for it. So, of course, um, a lot of things were happening during that time. We had two little babies. We are just starting the business. I invested four and a half thousand dollars into a website. The guy disappeared for three months. He wouldn't pick up the phone. And he was through, he was really through uh, recommendations, right? Through the recommendations. And at the end of the day, I was thinking to myself, okay, we're launching on 26th of August of 2013, right? And I still don't have a website. I don't know what to do. I have to do a live. I was thinking all these things in my head. My husband said, stop. You're going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. You're going to laugh about it. All I did was just cry and cry. I said, oh my God, we're launching. We don't have a website. We don't have anything. We, we need to make money. We have to da, 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 all these millions of things. But God bless him, Daniel. Um, he was just my right hand, my left hand, my backbone, everything. So I was thinking back and I was like, thank God I allowed all of these things um, to be second and my husband first, because he is the one that really kind of brought me to Annalee in a way, mm -hmm. because I would have been a, a, a stylist in the, for backstages, right? Or I would have been a, a stylist in the salon or there could have been a million things and there would be no Annalee Cosmetics, mm -hmm. right? So as the time progressed, I was doing the different shows. I was still, I got a uh, brand ambassador who connected me with um, uh, global, what do you call those? Um, we have these awards here, um, Golden Globes. Oh, okay. And uh, my brand was one of the golden, like one of the goodie bags from Anali Cosmetics were brought Wow. To give it to be given to all of the celebrities and all the press. And I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I remember making that post and people were like, wow, like that is huge. How did you even get in there? And I was like, I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> I don't even know where they found me. I'm a, such a tiny dot in the ocean, but I was always focused on the message. Message. Message is so important. You know, when you people were saying, Why are you selling water in the ocean? And I would say, I'm selling filtered water in the ocean. Mm -hmm. so people were you know of course a lot of friends they weren't supportive because that's just how it is people are waiting until you get somewhere and they're like oh my god I'm so glad I supported you yeah, <laughs> yeah. so in 2018 um, a huge thing happened because my husband he's a real estate broker and he got into a partnership with two like poisonous people that I warned him not to go into but he did so in August of 2018, I had to quit NLA Cosmetics. I had to put it on, on hold, major hold, and I had to go to his business. I learned brand new business. I learned everything about real estate, about the rentals, and I started working. Of course, it was very difficult for me mentally because I was just growing the business. We were getting to places I was being, you know, the influences were picking it up and it was really just growing and growing. And I had to put a hard stop because I had to get my husband out of that partnership. So as I was closing the deals and I was uh, one of the top agents there, um, I told my husband, I said, when are you going to get out? This is not working. We're drowning. He lost $40,000 because he kept investing, investing, investing. We were at the lowest financial point again. I was like, this is not happening. Like, we need to get out of this already. It's just constantly something is dropping. And my husband is a, bit, a little bit more of a, on a softer side. And I'm like, you know, when it comes to business, I'm like a, the worst guy ever. Like, I'm like, no, this is how we're doing it. And this is how it's going to be like, you know? Yeah. And he's like, but Elena, like, this is not how we're supposed to be doing it. And we need to talk it out. I said, no. So I started texting him. This is what you're going to tell her, the partner. And he was saying it. And then I'm, I hear the conversation. I'm texting to say this and say that <laughs> she storms out his partner. He, she storms out. And I was like, one month later, we got rid of them. But this was at the end of, um, 2018. Uh, in the beginning of 2019, on, on uh, January 1st, I found out that I was pregnant with my fourth baby. And at that point, it was so toxic in his business that I was like, what am I going to do now? Like, I'm pregnant. I need to get rid of the, the other partner. It's just too much pressure. Mm -hmm. So I told my husband, I was like, so what are we going to do? He's like, are you crazy? We're never, ever, ever sacrificing any kids for any partnership. Like, this isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but Daniel, you don't understand. We're in such a deep hole with these, with these problems. He's like, I don't care. Family first. I was like, okay. One month later, we get rid of all of them. We shut down the business. I go back to NLA Cosmetics. The world started going up. The world started 
being brighter. At that time, I actually started to became a part of Global Women Club and I started meeting other women. And when I went back to LA Cosmetics, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm breathing. I'm finally breathing. My oxygen is there. So the brand, of course, took off. We are worldwide. Um, thank God, you know, a lot of different countries picked it up. A lot of um, salons picked it up, spas picked it up. People just started loving it. And oh my gosh, there's just so much in between little things. But in a nutshell, you know, when you are family oriented, this is my personal opinion, and I lived by it. When your family is your base, everything else somehow is going to fall into place. It just will. Because your, your head is in the right space. Mm-hmm. So I hope that answered your question for 45 minutes. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you so much. And you shared so much. And I just love the way that you, you told that story. Because I, I, can, I don't know about Grace, but it felt like I was actually there. Like I was living it with you. And um, I just love, you know, I love how you, you were so authentic. You started talking about, you know, your, your um, interest in psychology and... You know, for people watching this video, I think, you know, some of the key messages that will come out from this is that, you know, you had this initial um, view in terms of, you know, where you were going to go, your route, and you felt that you were very creative, but it wasn't what, you know, the route that you chose was not the route for you. So you made a decision to change that despite the financial, um, you know, input that you'd have to make for that. And that shows a lot of perseverance and a lot of tenacity because sometimes people run away from things because of money. They think, oh, I've invested in this, so I need to see it out. But then at other times, like if we use your example, you can, you know, maneuver out of that and follow your true, your true passion. And that the ups and the downs that you've been through, you know, and having four children at the same time and the salon burning down and, you know, then, you know, supporting your husband with real estate, how did you how did you manage your mindset at that time because from what i can remember from your story is that you know you you initially didn't go into beauty but then you did and then everything was great then it all fell down again then it was great and then you had left it to go to support your husband and being in in real estate because i i've got a real estate background and so has grace it's not you know that you can be creative to a certain point but certainly not creative in the sense of the, the work that you were doing. So how did you manage your mindset around that to, to sort of make that switch again for a further time? You know, yeah. So thank you so much for that question because I think not, not enough people ask it. People are like, well, how does it feel to be, you know? But this is the root mindset. This is the root. So thank you so much for asking that. Number one, I am the most positive person I know. I can sell it for a living. I, <laughs> I believe that you whatever you concentrate on, you're going to grow. It's like, you're looking at that flower, but you are watering your tree and that flower is never going to grow. You're just not giving it what you, you know what it means. So this is what I have been looking at. Okay, fine. You know what? I'm going to do this and we're going to see how it goes. So I have a strong belief in God. Everyone has their own, you know, belief system. I do. I believe that God will always get me to wherever I need to go. And I always tell myself in my head, well, you have two choices. You either figure it out or you just die. Like, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. I'm an extremist when it comes to positivity. You know, I don't, I don't give myself a plan B. There's only plan A. Okay, you want to do analytic cosmetics? Great. How are you going to go there? How many women are you going to show this to? How many problems are you going to solve? So when I have in my mind that I am chosen to do a specific task, this is my mission. I need to go and do it. There is no exception. There is no cry me a river. There is no, I'm too tired. There is no such thing. Your why has to be bigger than any excuse in the world. So when I'm, for example, there are days, as you know, you're also a mom. There are days when we just want to like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I can't even think straight. The kid is crying. I need to nurse this one. This one needs a project done. I need to do a live. I'm invited here. There's a red carpet event. And you just feel like the pressure is going to blow up. What I do is I tell my husband, I said, just take everybody out. I turn on a, a Turkish drama or a Korean drama, or I listen to music. I get my mind together. So you need your hobbies. You need some kind of a hobby. 
Um, and then you come to yourself and you push yourself. So if you think for a second, and I'm not saying it to you personally, just whoever's listening. If you, if a person thinks for one second that there's going to be a savior somewhere that's going to pull you out and say, all right, here's what you're going to do next. Not going to happen. Quit now. It's not going to happen. You have to be your own pusher, cheerleader, everything. Because there are times when the, your own partner, husband, wife, whatever, is going to be giving up, which my husband did many, many times. He's like, just quit. Just quit. It's fine. Just quit. And I'm like, no, never. So mindset, it's like a muscle you train. Like you're a second degree black belt, right? You never quit. If you quit, you don't get it, right? It's hard. I've taken Taekwondo. It's very hard. Same thing in life. Same thing in business. Why are you doing it? How bad do you want it? How many people need this? Mm -hmm. This is what I tell myself. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So what you concentrate grows. There's only a plan A, no plan B. I've not heard of that before, but (laughs) I can see the, uh, the concept behind that. And your why needs to be bigger than any excuse. They are three massive golden nuggets that, that, you know, if anyone takes anything away from this interview, they are the three things. Tell me a bit about your, your dad, because I remember when you said earlier that um, when you were thinking about going into cosmetology and he wasn't that keen. So was he always in, in uh, barbering or was, was that no. as a of you going into, into this sort of area and then he kind of wanted to do something similar? No, it actually had nothing to do with me. He, he's been doing, um, he's an MC. So he's been doing um, weddings and parties, but on a really big scale. So he right. is a hustler. I learned so much from him. Maybe that's why I'm like heading like head first type of person. Cause he's like, oh, just do it. Just do it. That's, that's his motto in life. So he was never scaring us. <gasps> you should just get a job and like work from nine to five. Never, not once. He's like, go, go make money and live. Right. So as the time was, he was getting a little bit older and he was just getting tired and his friend, it's so funny how my best friend pushed me into it and his best friend pushed him into it. And he said, listen, Michael, my husband, my father's name is Michael, Mikhail, can you just, you need to become a barber because it's a very like low key job and you won't get so tired and you can still do your music on a side, but it's going to be your own business and you will have your own time. And, and my dad fought him left and right for like two years. Like, forget it. I'm not doing it. It's too boring. It's too boring. It's too boring. And then eventually he realized he's like, okay, there was a salon for sale. It was very busy salon in, in Borough Park, which is in a very religious uh, Jewish Orthodox area. And my dad went in there and he's like, okay, if it's not going to go, it's not going to go. He became a barber, but it was very hard for him because he's such a, he's like me. Or I'm more like him. He's a very creative person. He, he likes hype and, and party and like, that's his lifestyle. And this was like very mellow and quiet. So yeah. I learned from him how to be a little bit of a chameleon, right? In life, you kind of go with the flow of life and you just adjust. So adjustment for me and for him is very, very easy coming. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that he got the salon helped me where I am today, because again, that helped Annalie to be born. That helped me to be an entrepreneur. That helped me to take care of my family and do my business because there was no boss above me, you know? So I was able to bring the kid here, go, go leave. So that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I, and I love what you say about, you know, family is your base. So being a mother of four and going through all of those trials and tribulations, but still having that laser vision that laser focus to achieve your goals what sort of support did you have in order for you to balance being able to focus on the business as well as being a mother and looking after the home so first of all my husband is a huge help I think if your partner is not on board with you forget about growing anything you either have to have a lot of money to hire help Um, or you can't do it because when you have a family, you need a village. So my mom is like my right hand in business. She's been with me through ups and downs through really lows and really highs. And she really just, whatever I needed, she was always there. She put her life on hold for her children. 
and she's with us. So if I needed her to hold a baby, she would. If I needed my husband to stay home, she, he would. But my husband, for the first 10 years of our marriage, he was working on his real estate. He was doing phenomenal. He was doing great. Um, he was the supporter. He was the provider. He was everything. So I had to cut down my hours. So I did a lot more for the family. Mm -hmm. I would pick up the kids. I would take the kids to, do, to daycares and schools. I would come home. I would do the you know laundry, cooking and cleaning and raising the business. So I, I kind of took that role more. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't have that support from your family, it's very, very hard. It's very hard, but that's not enough. You also yourself have to understand that there will be a time, a divine timing where it's going to be time for you and it's just going to open up. I believe in divine timing. Nothing ever happens because it just happened. Nothing. There's one very important thing before I forget, I wanted to share with you. Um, someone told me years ago when I lost Elmis, right? My son, the first salon, they said, if you are not going to hear the, um, the hints from universe, when is the time to quit mm -hmm. and start something new, the universe will make a decision for you and you will like it or you will not like it, but that's going to be that. Mm -hmm. So I realized that there were some clues and Elmis that I was supposed to quit Elmis and do something else. But I was like, it's okay. I'm just going to continue building, continue building. And I live by it. And I just, I always pray to God, please do not let the universe to take over. I'm just going to listen to the clues and I'm just going to continue doing what I'm supposed to do. So that's very important. Listen to the clues that universe is throwing at you before it, ta it takes over because whatever has to happen will happen no matter what you do. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's very true. And I like what you say about, you know, having support and it's great that you do have that support, but not not all families, not all mothers have that. You know, you have some single mothers that are out there on their own struggling to, you know, make ends meet. But, you know, hearing stories like yourself, you know, about your tenacity, your perseverance will certainly inspire them. Is there anything that you would do differently if you had your time over again? No. No. Okay. And is that because of your experiences have helped you to grow or... What, what if that? you would ask me this question, I would say maybe two, three years ago, I would say definitely I would change this, that, this, that I would be more, more social. But now that I have grown so much and have learned so much, I wouldn't change a thing because at that time I was sure in it. Right. Right. At that time. And I have to honor that. And I wasn't ready back then for this. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And it's so like, I wouldn't. When the universe says, you know, it's going to, you know, knows that you're ready for something, it will give it to you or it will make a decision on your behalf. So it's about being open. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's about being open to just be accepting and whatever you believe in God, Jesus, whatever, whatever it is, right? Muhammad, any, anything, but you need to believe in something. Even mm -hmm. an atheist believes that there's something. If you don't have something spiritual guiding you, it's physical world is too much to handle on its own because there are a lot of things we don't understand and can't explain mm -hmm. we just can't explain like why does this happen to this good person and not a bad person right so when you believe okay i know i'm stressed i know it's a lot i have four boys running around they're just gonna <laughs> they're driving me nuts sometimes but i love them to pieces but there is a reason why i am given this there's a reason why i am given this not my sister, my brother, me, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. What am I going to do with it? Mm. Good question. Good question to ask. And so as, as we move on, talking about your, your makeup line, just going back to your makeup line, um, as I mentioned earlier, that it's organic, it's natural, it's, it's vegan and gluten-free in terms of the ingredients. So is that what makes it different from other mineral makeup brands or is there something else? So a lot of brands are like PETA certified or they're vegan, but my line is made with pharmaceutical grade minerals. It's, it's a, so a lot of, you know, cosmetic grade, right? Big brands have cosmetic grade, but you cannot unfortunately put that on an inflamed skin. For example, after waxing or microdermabrasion or facials or laser hair removal or certain like Botoxes, you cannot put that on because it may, um, worsen the skin. My makeup is specifically formulated to um, calm the skin down, to 
um, advance the healing process. So we formulated with that in mind, because you don't need another mineral makeup in this world. There are a lot of brands, but what we did need and then got to my cosmetology background is that I realized there's so much junk. So for example, I'll give you one quick example. So you can understand vegan. Huge word, big word. Everybody's using it. Literally every single brand. We're vegan. We're vegan. But do people really understand that synthetic junk is also vegan? Mm. Synthetic junk is also vegan. Meaning vegan is that they didn't use any animal derived ingredients. Mm. Right. But it doesn't mean that it's clean. It doesn't mean that there's no uh, artificial colors or fragrances that a lot of people break out from a lot. Right. Mm. So just that one little speck of vegan on it, people are like, oh, great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Or gluten-free. Well, doesn't make any sense gluten-free. It's just like a hype. Makeup is not going to give you a reaction from gluten if it has gluten in it. So mm. it, there's just so much noise. So this is why I am huge on educating. So for me, it's not about a lipstick. Oh, buy my stuff. No, it's about, okay, if you're going to buy this, do you know how to use it? Do you know why you chose this particular product versus another product? So this is why I am where I am is because that much education goes into each customer. Mm. And you do a lot of education on social media in terms of, t- tell us a bit about, about that. So at first I started out by doing live events. I invited people to my salon and I just did a free event to educate women on makeup. And then I had my third baby and I was like, I'm too tired to do this. So I stopped. Last year, well, I've done a lot of lives over time, but I've been asked to do group, like create a group, create a group. And I said, wow, that's one more thing to be consistent in. And I don't know if I have the capacity at that time, because I do have a one and a half year old, right? That I'm still nursing. So I have to honor that and give him the time. And then during the pandemic, I know a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but to me, it was a blessing. I'll Mm -hmm. tell you why. It turned my world and restructured it in a way where I was able to be more home. I created a beauty group. I was able to go live. I go live every Monday night. Mm -hmm. I do a tutorial, um, a free, free group. And my husband stopped with his real estate and I was able to get him over to NLA Cosmetics. He's like my right hand right now. He's not doing makeup, obviously. He's doing all the back end business stuff, but he's super creative. So um, it just synced, you know, it's like, it's so weird how this happens. Just everything just synced. So yeah, yeah, so that's, that's amazing. So that's, yeah. I mean, for some people, you know, this whole pandemic has been a blessing and it's about finding the blessing in these challenges. And you've obviously found, found that. And so if anybody wanted to come along and, you know, connect with you, find out more about, your Facebook lives or when you sort of make up tutorials because you always look like beautiful like a porcelain doll how would they how would they get in contact with you well it's very easy because I'm at NLA Cosmetics everywhere like you can't miss me um, but specifically on in a group it's called NLA Cosmetics Beauty right so yeah and uh, I go live there every Monday night at 8 p.m eastern but it is recorded so they can watch it again okay Fantastic. And so before I um, pass you over to Grace for a couple of questions, Grace is one of our mentees. What are the three top tips that you would give to an upcoming mompreneur to have a better balance in life, grow their sales and manage their business better? Oh, good question. Um, Well, number one, you need a village. You need somebody to help you. It could be a neighbor. It could be a grandma. It could be um, an aunt. It could be anybody. And you really just need about an hour a day. If you can get an hour a day of just for yourself, and this goes also for single moms. I know many, many single moms, you know, life gets in a way that's just the way it is. But if you get one hour in, Mm -hmm. um, maybe when your child is sleeping, yeah, make sure you maximize that hour and make sure you're super organized. Mm -hmm. So for example, when a lot of women are starting out in business and I say women, because we're just, we're in the, we're talking mompreneurs, but this goes for anyone. Um, 
when you're starting out in business, sometimes there's so much noise, you know, you go for YouTube tutorials, you go for different gurus, you go for so many things and you're thinking, what do I do? What do I do? Start with one thing, with one thing. If you're selling makeup, start with one product and really expand it to the point where it will pay you enough to go for the next thing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So start with one thing. I always say major in one thing, minor in the other. So for example, if I'm, if I'm starting out a makeup brand, I've started with foundations and I'm talking about foundations until foundations pay me enough that I can talk about lipstick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Same thing in service industry. If you're offering, if you're a holistic healer and you have 565,000 things, pick one thing, talking about digestion and that's it. Mm. And then add a little supplement. So that's number two, right? Organize, organize, organize. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. first you need a village, right? You need somebody, you need help. So either you hire somebody for, I don't know, $15 an hour for one hour a day, or you ask someone for help. And second is organize yourself so that that one hour is really, really optimized. Mm -hmm. The third thing, you need to set your own hours. You cannot, and I'm literally preaching to myself, but you cannot work around the clock and be okay for your family. You can't. We are not machines, even though we are doing great as such, but we are not machines will burn out. You have to prevent burnout. So the days you feel like, oh my God, I just want to quit. I just want to quit. That's your sign that you don't have your own hours. As a business owner, as a professional, you have to think, all right, I'm running two businesses. And I like cosmetics and my children, my husband, you're running two businesses. So when you think, oh, I'm starting a business. You're starting your second business. Yeah. (laughs) Your first business is your family. So when a person goes into it with that mindset, I'm starting my second business. Mm -hmm. And the way you run your family is going to translate in the way you run your business. If you're all frustrated, leave me alone. Oh my God, be quiet. I have a little, you're going to do the exact same thing in your business. Mm. I promise you, you're going to do the same thing in your business. So you need to get it together and be on top of the family business and the business business. Yeah. That's number three. Mm -hmm. That's great. Need a village, get super organized and set your own hours. And I love what you say that your family is your first business. Because I think a lot of, whether it be mothers or or just people in general that are starting up businesses, forget about their, their family as a business. They don't see it as a business. They just see it as always going to be there. And then they put a lot of energy into the business. And then when cracks start to show in their family, things obviously don't work out as they should do because they're not seeing or treating it as a business in terms of looking after your, your family as your priority. So that, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Of course. Lo- loved having, having you on today and just sharing, you know, your nuggets and your energy and it's just, your story is incredible. You know, I, I've known you for a little while, but I didn't know the, the full in, ins and outs of your story. It's absolutely incredible. Have you ever thought about um, writing your story? Yeah, a lot of people actually approached me with that. And I, I guess I just have to get organized and get it together and write it. <laughs> You know, it's also hard, like, to admit it to yourself that you went through it. That's that's a big one. Like, oh, I actually went through that? Because we forget the pain when we're on high. Like, so that's another thing, I guess. A lot of women are like, oh, I'm never going to say it. I'm never going to say it out loud that I was struggling. I'm just going to show them the beautiful side to me. So but it's very inspiring. And also, it's, you know, it's something that you can leave as a legacy for your four children. You know, the story that, that mom went through or yeah. the story that mom and dad went through the highs and the lows and they can then you know share that story for generations to come so you should seriously think about it yeah I will (laughs) (laughs) great all right so Grace um would you like to ask Yelena a couple of questions before she goes yeah thank you that was just wow a lot a lot of great (laughs) value a lot of information a lot of insight and yeah I was really captivated by your story you have been through an amazing journey you know and um we thank god for that the, the way it's continuing so really great great story that you've shared with us thank you so two questions first of all remind or summarize the ages of your four boys for me at the moment 10 9 5 and one and a half 
cool. Very interesting. <laughs> interested with the gaps. <laughs> Quick succession, small gap, and then another small gap. Okay. And then, so what does a typical day look like for you? Okay. So I still nurse my son. So I'm nursing him in the morning. Mm -hmm. My husband mm -hmm. takes the kids makes breakfast, lunches, leaves the house. Then my son usually sleeps another couple hours in the morning. So I get up, mm. I go to do my breakfast. I come back. He usually cries at the time. I go nurse him again to sleep. Then I go for my power walk, either with him mm. or I leave him home with my husband, which is the best, best scenario. Yeah. And then I get behind the computer. I go through my schedule. Um, I ask my husband to just take the child and I need to focus on certain projects because I have a lot of projects coming up and we're working mm. on. And I connect with every single person that we're supposed to do projects and i'm standing on top of it like okay when are we doing this live are we doing it at this time what is this and then um then at the same time i am working on canva which is the best um you know editing and i create different marketing materials right mm -hmm. at the same time i also speak with my designer who i have a lot of different things that he's working on and i'm making sure that everything is working out the way we're supposed to then i take a break i, I have maybe like a bar or i have lunch during that time i like to watch my little dramas i love turkish dramas korean dramas that's my favorite mm -hmm. um then i come back to and I do, let's say, I, I do a bunch of stories. I like to keep people active and just kind of, it's good for algorithms also. Yeah, and then yeah. I would get, of course, a million phone calls. Um, and I respond to literally every single phone call, unless I'm doing something like this, where I cannot interrupt. Um, then it's already time when my kids are coming home around 3.30. My husband goes, picks them up. So right now he's really on top of the family a lot more. Mm. Um, then he comes home. I spend some time with my children. I ask them how the day was. Teach me something you, you learned. I'm very curious. We, we hug. We sit. Then I'm like, okay, now mommy needs some time. I'm going to go to my office office right home office yeah and then the kids of course have to ask me one million questions while i'm doing work that's okay then of course i get up um i do some housework like a little bit here or there maybe i'll cook something um then i come back i cut continue speaking with the designer we receive boxes i'm doing inventory i'm doing like a lot of background work mm. um i get a lot of invitations so i have to go through them and see which ones make sense which ones don't make sense mm. um then towards the evening i already again i would have my bar or i would have you know light dinner really quickly and then i spend more time with my children i try to i give them massage me and my husband will do massage and story um, and of course that lasts about an hour and a half, you know, that while well, everybody gets all their stories and, <laughs> and then it's around like 10 o'clock when, when they start like winding down, even though we start at seven 30. Um, and then I go back to the computer. He goes back on the computer. He would do some editing and we would discuss certain things. Right. And I would continue working until about maybe like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Cause lately I've been just really tired from, you know, there's a lot happening. And then I started like being very mindful. So I would go and nurse my son and we would fall asleep. So that's like my typical day. Wow. So the conclusion is around about 11 PM midnight ish. And you usually wake up around about what? With the seven okay cool that's very interesting insightful okay i'm a mother of three boys and um the family are looking for a fourth not a boy they would like a girl i'm like i want to focus on the on the business for now and you we've got like three year gaps we kind of planned it <laughs> and they've all come along um and I said, I'm on a pause. And I just wanted to understand maybe how you are to kind of balancing with a newborn and keeping the business going. And so, yeah, how are you, how, it, what's your perception of the early days with a newborn? Did you have to take, take a bit of a siesta from business? How did it go for you? No, I never took a break when I had the baby. I would have the baby. I would go back to work the next day. I would literally wear my child while the baby's nursing and do my clients. So I'm crazy. So don't, don't listen to me. <laughs> But normally, I would say, if you want to have more kids, you, you have more kids. You do not mm. put your life on pause for anything right. mm. because you, I always ask myself, okay, when I'm 90, am I going to regret this decision? Mm. If I'm getting yeah. back, yeah, I'm going to regret not having like the fourth or the fifth. I'm having that baby or I'm, I'm doing that vacation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do not ever pause your life for mm. business. Mm. You can adjust to it. 
Mm. You can make different arrangements, right? Mm. But mm. you don't put your life on pause. Of course, mm. at the same time, we cannot be like unrealistic and be like, okay, um, I already have like 14 children and like three businesses and I'm like exhausted and no one's helping me. And, but I'm going to have another baby. That's crazy because, yeah. you know, but if you do have support, yeah, you know, and your husband is really good and yeah. knows how to cook and clean and whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Like your, for me, family is number one. That's it. That's, mm. that's it. I would quit anything tomorrow mm. for my children. Awesome. And then you mentioned bar as opposed to dinner. What's bar? A bar? You yeah, know, like a protein bar. Like, you know, those oh, protein bars. Oh, okay. Okay, a protein bar or dinner. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I like these RX bars. I get them on Amazon. They're really good. So. Okay, perfect. I think that would conclude my questions for now. Thank you so much for your input. My Yelena. pleasure. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I just love how you're so open, Yelena. You can just ask you anything and you'll just, just like ask Yelena and she'll just, uh, you know, give us it straight from straight from the hip <laughs> yes. yes that's me <laughs> it, it's been an absolute pleasure interviewing you today Elena and you know again thank you for, for sharing thank you for inspiring and your story will, will definitely empower other mothers whether they be you know in partnerships married or, or single the fact that you have gone through so many you know life challenges but always bounced back and there's always a story. There's always some, you know, form of positivity. There's no negativity in, in your story. Everything's been a lesson for you. And it's been a learning, a, a lesson of learning growth. And yeah, I, I'm truly inspired and in awe of, of what you've achieved. So congratulations and well done. And certainly we will be, um, you know, sharing your details with regards to anybody that wants to connect with you. And we look out for your story coming out in, in print as well, because that would be, uh, it almost sounds like a movie when you, um, the way that you describe it. So uh, yeah, you really Thank you. <laughs> see your story out there. So well, yeah, Linda, I want to say thank you so much for even giving me the opportunity. When you asked, I was like, oh my God, I'm so honored. Who, me? <laughs> um, so I want to thank you. And the questions you asked were so good. And it had substance and value. And I hope, I hope I've inspired someone somewhere, but no one ever said it was going to be easy. They just said it was going to be worth it. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. That's, and that's such a beautiful way to, to end the interview. And yeah, it's been an honor having you today. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And pleasure meeting you, Grace. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs>